What's this uh, company called? <laughs> shirts and pants. Holy shirts and pants. It's a little corny and obvious, but pretty good out of being so, right? And boom, we are live. Welcome, folks, to the American Movie Podcast. If you've never been here before, welcome aboard. Today, we're going over one of the most important books I've read this year. Um, I really love this book. I listened to it on Audible, and it's called The Body Keeps the Score, Brain, Mind, and Body in the Healing of Trauma. Trauma. I thought I about said traumatic. So, this is a crazy book because it draws, it draws a lot of evidence onto self-regulation versus um, prescription drugs. So it goes into it goes into different types of trauma too. So there's childhood trauma, there's or trauma, there's um, accidental trauma, there's domestic trauma, adult trauma, and then um, PTSD um, having to do with either wars or stuff like that or uh, terrorist attacks. So he comes off really strong and sets the ground against prescription drugs just because a lot of it, there's so many people, I think it's one in five in Americans or it's one in five Americans are um, prescribed some sort of a Bilify or something along those lines, Prozac. And they're finding, and this guy's been um, practicing for 30 years and he has a lot of compelling evidence that I'll get into. And it's, it's crazy that there's a small percentage of people that are actually getting fixed a little. I mean, this is by no means saying get off prescription drugs or anything like that. You should totally consult your doctor or and you should check out this book because there might be some alternative measures that you could take in order to fix this trauma. So the reason trauma is so important is because people hold it and they don't address it. And it puts you in this state of um, flight and your body has this sense of danger and this contributes to um, depression, um, addiction, uh, lack of job security, all these things. And there are some measures that you can, and even focus. So if you can't focus or connect or collaborate with people just in general due to these traumatic experiences, you're going to have a world of hurt in the future. So you won't be able to keep a job or anything like that. So it's really compelling and it's really important and it seems like it's one of the most important things that we're not talking about or trying to sweep under the rug and we're just sort of dulling or um, demagnifying the effects that people actually have and they're taking these drugs and it's just kind of making it um, null and void and there's kind of ghostly. So, man, this is this is a tough book and it's, it's really compelling and I can't implore... There's so many people within, everybody knows somebody who's had traumatic experiences or childhood abuse or something like that. So this is like a great book to just check out. And I've, I've read numerous books on addiction, depression, opioids, and a lot of the compelling evidence is leaning towards fixing the relationships and um, yeah, restoring relationships, choosing the language that you use around the problems or in your day to day and how you're actually interacting with people, altering that language, and then um, actually movement and touching. Like we're removing, um, he goes into the, one of the most important things with children is mammalians need to learn rules and they do that through movement, interaction, play. So like removing PE or chorus or anything joyful and just having um, uh, systematic testing kind of is soul sucking and you don't really get that collaboration because the world is collaborative like it's the school system is kind of along the lines of systematic individual testing but there's a lot of collaboration and social interaction and engagement that's necessary so he he puts forth a lot of compelling evidence that this is one of the biggest traumatic or trauma itself is the biggest public health issue because it i mean it affects more people than cancer and heart disease childhood abuse anyways and a lot of childhood abuse, it leads to, um, first I want to talk, there was this ACE study. So look this up if you, if you want, um, it's the ACE study and it was, the conclusions were childhood trauma. And if you removed the childhood trauma, it would reduce two thirds of alcoholism and, um, child abuse can, yeah, it costs more than cancer and heart disease. And it would reduce the rate of depression by half. 
And then it would reduce suicide, domestic violence, and drug use by three-fourths. And that's childhood abuse. And nobody's talking about it. So I always like the phrase, it's a lot easier to build strong children that grow into men than to fix broken men. And that's a summation of it, but that's along the lines. And that makes total sense. It makes total sense to me. So, and it would also um, decrease incarceration. So yeah, the four things are basically uh, restoring the relationships, picking the language that you choose, movement, self-regulation, and the self-regulation, there was a lot of proof in that too. So self-regulation would be just... um, Uh, breathing and uh, yoga. So they used, they had 10 weeks of yoga and they put them on PTSD patients that didn't um, interact with the drugs at all. So they had no helpful um, recourse with the drugs. So they took the, they took the drugs, nothing happened. So then they saw um, a significant increase in well being with the PTSD patients when they did 10 weeks of yoga Um, and, uh, or uh, neurofeedback. So neurofeedback is, one of the examples was was EDMR, which is um, electrodes in your eyes. So it's like just light, light, and then interaction and therapeutic questioning while those are going on. So check out, check this book out, man. It's I think it's really important. Um, yeah, check it out. It's so cool. And then one one thing that I found really um, interesting is that there's a lot of um, through religion and a whole bunch of other things, there is this systematic breathing or there's this systematic singing or this collaboration or this, you know, um, interaction with people. And some of it's collective effervescence, some of it's breathing, some of it's just getting oxygen through the body, but it turns on, when you breathe deeply, it turns on your parasympathetic nervous system. And that is the calming state. It's not flight state. So whenever you're, you're basically rewiring your brain. You're re- rewiring your brain in order to calm yourself and you're not falling into these ruts rather than taking prescription drugs and it's just creating brain chemistry where you're a little bit less um, hypoactive or hyperactive or a state of arousal. So it's actually giving you the self-regulation tools in order to kind of cope and interact throughout the world instead of just taking these reoccurring drugs. And after long-term durations of these um, breathing practices or these yoga instructions, it's helped conclusively. And instead of having to take these drugs over and over and over in order to keep this state of um, calm. So it's this was a great book, man. And I'm also reading uh, Lost Connections by Johan Harari. And a lot of the conclusive evidence is in this too with depression and everything. So it was a, it's a crazy book and I loved it. And one of the most important ones that I think would help a lot of people. That's why I want to bring it up is because I think it'll help a lot of people. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, Let me know if you have any concerns or where to get this book or the author is Bessel. He, I'm going to try to, do the best I can with his name, Bessel van der Kolk, MD. So that once again was the body keeps the score, um, brain, mind, and body in the healing of trauma. So check it out. I think it's very, um, contemporary because there's so much depression. There's so much anxiety. There's so many suicides are out, um, outnumbering, uh, car accidents and violent acts. So it's like, it's an important topic that I think needs to be addressed, man. So (laughs) check it out. Highly recommend it. One of the best books I've got my hands on this year. So until next time, let me know if you like this. Uh, Let me know if you have any other questions or concerns or anything like that. And um, check this, check this book out. It's, it's incredible. So thank you so much, Matthew Benjamin with the American movie podcast until next time. Bye, 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 bye. Or all someone has to pay for the uh, lap dances for the big guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's joking around. <laughs>